Hello! Welcome back to my channel. My name is B, if you didn't know, and today I'll be talking about references. Drawing from reference has been a very important tool for me. My personal style, as well as my visual library, has developed tremendously because of it. And you may be asking yourself, what is a visual library? Well, your visual library exists in your memory, and it's the part of your brain that you can reach into and pull visuals out of when you need them. You develop this library by subconsciously picking up visuals either from other artists' work, like comics or cartoons, or from drawing using references. The more you draw from reference, the more accustomed you get to drawing the things that you're referencing. And the more you do that, the easier it is to draw that face or pose or whatever from memory instead of using a reference. The same thing goes for when you study other people's work. Subconsciously, you're picking up the pieces you like most about the work you're studying, and eventually, when you put all those pieces together, it creates an amalgamation of visuals from your favorite artists, and the more you practice it, the more it becomes your own. For example, my own personal style has developed from the likes of Ira.exe and Curix, as well as Tatalite and Miriam Tilson. If you want a more like in-depth video on how my own personal style has developed, I would be happy to do one. Just let me know in the comments or something, because that sounds like a pretty fun video <laughs> to make. And I'm not saying go copy other people's art and sell it as your own. I'm saying practice in private, and when you feel confident that what you're creating is your own, you can start sharing it. It's just really important to study whatever you're studying. <laughs> like, really focus on the different parts of it that make up the piece, or picture, or whatever. It helps you get familiar with the different shapes that it's composed of, and when you know the different shapes, it's a lot easier to draw. As well as studying other people's work, I've also spent a lot of time studying actual pictures of people, which was also very influential in what my style has become today. Now you may be asking yourself, B, how do I do this? Well, I can show you here how I personally will study a reference. I doubt that this is anything professional. They probably have a different technique than I do because they know all the little nitty gritty stuff. I don't. <laughs> so this is basically just what I do based off of little things that I've learned on the internet. I'm gonna share it with you because this is how I make it, fake it till I make it. Is that the term? I don't know. I know that the structure of the head is generally this shaped. Somewhere there is a circle. So I kind of just circle the roundest part of the head. It's all kind of just like carving. I will block out some general shapes, like the circle, whatever shape this is, <laughs> an almost triangle, trapezoid-ish type thing. Then I will start carving out here are the cheekbones, this is where the nose would go, I'll block in the ear right there, kind of box in the area where the bottom of the eye socket is and where like the middle of the brow bone is, put a line right through the brow bone. I see that his eyes are a little bit sunken in right there, so I know that's where the eye socket is. I will put little dots on the corners of the mouth so I know where it stops and ends and I can know what point the, line, the corner of the mouth lines up with eye like so. I'll usually like mark this, I don't know what this is called, just like the top of the chin or under the lip, like the little line that is right there. Boop, 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 boop. For the neck I just kind of mark out where on the ear it looks like it's beginning. It's kind of like in the middle bottom. He's got a coat on. I do the same thing for the neck from this side over on this side, so this is where the chin is. Carve out where the bottom of the jaw is and the bottom of the chin. This part should dip in a little bit because his chin protrudes. And the bottom of the chin, little chin bump, jaw. And sometimes I will mark like a diamond where I know like this part of the jaw is. So I know the top of the diamond would start right underneath where the cheekbone begins on the outside. And then I can connect that to the corner of the lip from the lip just straight downwards from here to the corner of the jaw and downwards again. And because the diamond is shaped like so, I can see that his face is a little bit longer than typical because the diamond slants down this way as opposed to this drawing where the diamond in her face is very equal. 12 seconds later. From this point of the ear to this point right here, which you can't even really see. Here, we'll switch to this screen. 
Okay, now that we're on this screen, go through that one more time. Going back to the jaw for just a second, I'm able to tell that his face is a little bit longer than typical because his jaw is shaped this way, where this face of the diamond is slanted this way. On this lady, I can tell that her jaw was squarer than usual because instead of it being slanted, it goes straight down. And I was saying that everything is fairly relative to where all the other shapes are. I can tell where the eyes begin because this point of the ear and this point of the ear, I mean line, <laughs> are about this much distance away from each other. So if I take that there and I take that right here, I can visualize this line going here from where I see it right here. I know the distance between this line and this line is the equivalent of like an inch, I'd say. And eventually I can clean it up to where it looks like this. Overall, I think using references and studying other people's work is a really good way to build your visual library and recognize patterns in anatomy, as well as shapes you'd like to use in your own work. I recommend trying Ahmed Aldori's 100 Heads Challenge. It is a Pinterest reference challenge created by Ahmed Aldori, in which you head over to the board he created for this challenge that has 100 different references for faces, although some of the references repeat, so you can swap them for a different face if you so please and basically you just draw 10 heads a day for 10 days. I have done this challenge twice, but I personally didn't follow the time constraint of 10 heads a day for 10 days because I was still in high school and that seemed a little bit too much for me. But it was a really good way of developing techniques really quickly and getting a routine process down of how I draw a face from reference. For more full body dynamic poses, I recommend doing some gesture drawings. The goal is to convey a pose with simple lines and curves and when you do this, it forces you to simplify everything, which can make it a lot easier to draw poses from your imagination. Because you're taking a mental note of where all those joints are and which parts of the body are moving, and eventually you'd be able to visualize a pose in your head. You can put it down on paper in a gesture drawing because you've done it so many times. And lastly, I want you to take your own reference photos because spending a crazy amount of time surfing the web looking for a reference with the exact pose and angle that you want can be frustrating. <laughs> so take your own reference pictures. It can provide you both with exactly what you're looking for and an original pose. Some more videos that I recommend on this topic are how to draw from reference from Ross Draws, Use Better Pinterest References from Ergo Josh, How to Find Great References Tailored for You, also by Ergo Josh, and Never Draw from Photo Reference by Ethan Becker. And I will leave links to all these videos down in the description. That's all I have for you today. I hope you're staying hydrated and healthy and creative and safe. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>